Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back, everyone. So just to give, oh man, I have to change my calendar. Just to give an idea of what the next couple weeks look like. So Saturday, today is the 4th. We will be together on Saturday the 11th, Saturday the 18th, and then Sunday the 26th. I have to work um, the 25th. So yeah. And then the following month, there's a, it's kind of wonky, but then I don't have to work for quite a while because I decided to pick up another girl's shift. So anyways, not, enough about my life. Um, <laughs> so today we're going to talk about first things first. We're going to talk about building genuine relationships because you can post all the things in the world, but if you're not building a genuine relationship with people, they're not going to trust you enough. And I know I've talked about this a couple of times, but I'm just going to explain a few different ways that we can build genuine relationships and then touch on confidence because they kind of go hand in hand when you're talking about your business, your products, that sort of thing. And then we'll go right into planning our week day by day. Um, if you're new here, we talk about what to post on Facebook, Instagram, and then as well as stories as it relates to your business. There's a little bit of a different strategy for Facebook versus Instagram. So um, that's why I kind of split everything up. But um, I just feel like they're different platforms. Just like TikTok is different from Instagram, is different from Facebook, is different from Twitter if you use Twitter, but or any other sort of social media, they all have different vibes to them, if you will. Um, so that's why I kind of break it down. But the first thing I want to talk about is building genuine relationships with people. I was actually listening to this, and maybe I should drop the link in here because I was listening to this amazing YouTube video the other day by one of my favorite people. Well, he was being interviewed by somebody else. Um, his name is Ed Milet. He's like absolutely one of my favorite people. And I'm going to try to copy the link and share it here. Copy. Okay, back to the Zoom. I'm going to drop it in comments. But I just bought his book yesterday after watching that. And he had so many good insights. I hopefully you can copy that and just drop it into um, like YouTube or whatever. But the, maybe I should actually look at the title of the episode too. The title of the episode is If You Feel Lost, Lazy, and Unmotivated. Um, and it's Ed Milet and Max. Here, I'm going to type it in. Oh my gosh, get out of here. Max Luga Perry. That's whose channel it's on. But the title of his book. It's a little my orders. The power of one more. And he was he's talking about like his his dad was an alcoholic for years and then he beat his alcoholism by focusing on just one more day. And I feel like that's so relatable to our business too, because I think we get caught up in looking at long-term goals and looking at long-term things, what we want, whether that's a month, six months, a year, your ultimate goal of reaching the top of the company or whatever, you have this long-term thing and it can look sometimes like it's so, so, so far away. And I promise this is going to come full circle, but, um, the, like if we're always looking at that future, which I think it's important for you to have a vision of where you're going, but sometimes that can look so detrimentally far away where you're like, I don't know how I'm ever going to achieve that. So then your day-to-day, -day, um, actions, if you will, sometimes seem like pointless because you're like, that's so far away. I'm never going to achieve that. Like, what's the point in me doing this little thing? What's the point of me planning my week? What's the point of me doing my IPAs? Because that is so far away and I don't know how it's achievable. But the, the crazy thing is that is achieved by doing the small things day in and day out. So one of those things is building relationships. And he was talking about, and I took notes, of course, and he was talking about how he's really focused on building relationships with people. Um, he's a super, Ed Milet is a super successful 
entrepreneur. He interviews all sorts of people on his particular YouTube channel, which I highly recommend taking a look at that too. Ed Milet, M-Y-L-E-T-T. Um, but he interviews people from like Toby, Tony Robbins to all, all the big um, self-development gurus or whatever. But he said one of the things that made him super successful was building relationships. And the thing that he said that really, yeah, you're one relationship away from having either your life changed or their life changed. He thinks about, he said, think about the moments in your life where maybe you met your significant other or you had a job opportunity or like, let, let's think of Lavelle, for instance, the one interaction you had with whoever introduced you to this business or these products and how impactful just one conversation can be with somebody. So that's why I wanted to talk about building genuine relationships, because that is how you bring people into this business and potentially not only change your life, but change their lives as well. Um, the first thing I think that is most important when you're building relationships with people is removing the expectation, removing the expectation that they're going to buy something from you, removing the expectation that they're going to join your team, because I feel like that puts so much pressure on you and people sense authenticity. And if your motives are genuine and so I think anytime you're going into conversations and I go into different ways that we can build connection with people, but anytime you're going into a conversation with people, if your sole focus is I need to talk to this person because I need them to be in my products or I need them to be in my business, it's, it's going to feel icky to you. And like I said, the other week, if it feels icky to you, it's probably going to feel icky to them as well. Um, so I think just taking that off the table completely and just focusing on I want to build relationship with relationships with people that are like-minded like me that have common interests that maybe we can gain value or give value to one another. Um, there's a girl, for instance, that I, on my Instagram that I have a relationship with, she's never bought anything from me. I don't expect her to buy anything from me. Um, but she always is like tagging me in her stories. I'm tagging her in my stuff. Um, when I'm talking about like fitness related things, but it's just like building a community around things that we have common interests and in. ours happens to be fitness and weight loss. And I absolutely adore her. I absolutely love her. And we have built this connection where she feels like she can take me in things. So that's cool because then when she's taking me, it opens a whole door of other people that are on her page to come onto my page again, without any expectation and maybe someday she'll buy from me. Maybe someday she won't. And that's totally fine because I live in the realm of abundance. And that if you're, if you're thinking scarcity, like I need to get this person in order for my business to thrive, or, um, you think like there's only X amount of people out there, you're going to be in for an exhausting run for your business. There are so many people on this planet and I think that if you're thinking in abundance and you're thinking the people that are meant to be in my journey will be in my journey and I'm just going to make friends and build relationships along the way. So there's a couple different ways that we can build connection, obviously, on social media. Um, in person is a totally different thing. Obviously, I this is specifically a Zoom about um, building relationships online and creating content online. So that's what I'm going to talk to. But the way that we build connection on social media is there's a couple different ways connection through DMS. So direct messages, comments, story replies, and I would add in groups as well. So you're commenting on other people's things. You're direct messaging each other back and forth, whether that's in messenger or DMS on Instagram, and then just commenting on people's stories or replying to people's stories. Um, so when you're in that realm, again, take out the expectation of I'm doing this thing because I have to, and just focus on like for a few minutes a day, just say, I'm looking to just meet new people and create relationships with them. So that's replying to the things that they say in their story, whether you like agree with them, don't just force forcefully create comments or replies on stories because you feel like it's something you have to do or that you're doing your IPAs. So you have to check this box, but rather you're just wanting to meet new people. You're wanting to create new connections. So many people are craving connection right now because of 
all the stuff that we've gone through for the last year. Um, so they're especially looking for people, I, can't, I think, because there's like so much division and people that just haven't spent a lot of time around each other and things like that, that people are just craving. Um, people that are, are like-minded, that have common interests, that are just, you know what I mean? They're, even though they're miles apart, that they can talk to. And sometimes the best people that you'll meet are those that you can have conversations with that are outside of your immediate circle because they're like zoomed out and they can provide insight, value, um, advice, and they're not super close to the situation if you're just looking to talk about that specific thing. So those are the different ways that we build connection, DMs, comments, story replies, and then groups on Facebook as well. So engagement, I wanna talk about this. How are people, in engaging with your content are people even engaging in your content and one thing that i've talked about at nauseum but i will continue to say over and over again is if you can remove you guys from your vocabulary when you're speaking on stories i think live videos are different because they can see the community of people that are on that live video so if you're saying you guys and there's like a bunch of viewers that makes sense but when somebody is watching your stories it's you and them and I have found that my conversion, my relationship building and the interest that I get for even just like products and stuff like that is so much higher when I focus on saying the word you as I'm, as if I'm just talking to one person, like we're having a, like we're FaceTiming each other basically. Um, and I've actually noticed through when I've been watching other people's like TikToks or reels or things like that, things that people say are like, I feel like we're just having a conversation with each other and people love that. They love when you, they feel like it's just you and them. So for instance, yesterday I was talking about my, my thrive story basically in a, in this, a short amount of slides, because you don't want to, um, obviously drag it out too long because people lose interest. But I was like, have you ever felt like da, 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 da. And I just said, you, now, have you, have you guys ever felt like, I just said, have you ever felt like this before? And I talked about how I was feeling prior to joining Thrive. And I immediately got a message within a couple minutes of, from a woman that said, like, I feel like you were saying my exact story because I was relating to just her, she felt like, because I used the word you instead of you guys or something like that. I know we want to say things like that because we see I have this many followers, whether that's 300 or 3000. So, or your story views are like a hundred or 50 or 25 or whatever. So you're like, oh, there's 25 people. That's you guys. No, just say you just say the word you try it out. If you've never tried it out, I promise it. It not only makes you feel like you're just talking to one person and it kind of takes the pressure off of you as well, especially if you kind of have stage fright, if you will, where you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm talking to all these people. This is so frightening. If you're just acting like you're talking to your friend, I think it's so the pressure is off for you. And I feel like it's so much more easily received from the person on the other end. So the direct, so I saw Brock, of course, Brock Johnson is our social media guy for Lavelle, which is awesome because I think he's just so great. I love him. Um, but he was talking about the direction of social media the other day, and it's less of, I'm looking to get something from you. So, um, I don't know. So many people are like, I have this promo code, which I think that's good and stuff too, but so much less of like buy my stuff and get my things and more of, I want to give you things. So people are searching for the value with the sea of people that are on social media. And so many of them are just trying to be like, quote unquote, the influencer type or whatever. And so they're, they're looking for that person that's trying to provide value to them. So that's a way that you build relationships with people is consistently providing them with value. Now I wanted to talk about confidence before we go into planning our week. And I think confidence when you're having conversations with people all boils down to your intention. What is your intention with this other human that is talking to you? And when he said that in the video, because the guy had asked him, 
you know, like what gives you so much confidence in your business and your speaking ability? And he said, you know, it's because I know that I just want to do good in this world. And that is my intention. So every conversation I go into, the pressure's off because I'm just trying to do what's best for other people. And I think when you come with that approach with this business, you see so much more success than thinking about, yes, we all have our own personal goals, but you can't do that alone. You can't hit your goals alone. You can't get to 12K by yourself. You really can't, honestly, because you need X amount of legs. You can't get to the top of the company by yourself. So why are, why are you so much focused on like helping me, help me get this goal, help me do this thing. I need this, that. And when your intention flips to, I am looking to help other people that were in the same situation that I was before I started Thrive. I am looking to help people that are struggling to put gas in their car, that are struggling to make ends meet, that are feeling the weight of maybe not being able to afford things like they used to right now. And when you put that as the front, like the forefront of everything you do, your confidence will be so much better when you go into a conversation with somebody that says they're interested. So it's like, say somebody says they want to sample and they're, you're like, I just don't know. I don't know what to say. You know why you don't know what to say? Because you're focused on how can I close this person for myself and send this product out for myself and get a new customer for myself. If your focus is this person reached out to me because they are needing something I said related to them. They are needing something that I said one of the benefits that I said, or they're feeling the same way that I felt before I started. So when you're having a conversation with them about samples and they're like, um, well, how much does it cost? I tell them it's just $10 or $15 to cover the shipping, but you will feel so much better that you will forget that you even paid $10 for it or whatever it might be. But if you're focusing on like, I want to help this person feel good. I want to help this person regain their life back. I want to help this person maybe earn, earn that bonus that we have in June so that it could truly, truly help them out. If you're just focusing on, I need to get this person to VIP and you're not getting to know them at all prior to, it's going to be really hard for you to motivate that person. And it's going to feel like I'm just dragging this person along and it's selfishly done. So, um, always taking time to get to know people. But that's where your confidence comes from is where are your intentions? Where do they lie? Are you truly trying to just help people? And um, whether that is help people through the products or the business and letting that lead you through every conversation, lead you through every story that you're talking about, lead, lead you through every live video, every post you're making. I, my intention is to help the world. How can I convey that to people with my products and my, my business that I have? So I hope that was kind of helpful for that. Now we will plan our week. I try to make this 30 minutes if you're new here or under, if I can, because I know everyone's Saturdays are busy. And I want to, of course, give you time to take these things and actually implement them. Because if you're not doing that, then what's the point? (laughs) I mean, it's cool to hang out with you and all, but like, if you're not implementing the things, it's just a waste of your time. So starting, I'm going to try to go slower because I know I talk so fast sometimes. So starting with Monday on Facebook, I kind of want to change it up a little bit. Usually we talk about um, the capsules and Monday mornings because so many people struggle with Monday mornings. Um, But what I would actually like to talk about this time is your end of day. How does the end of your day look different? Because I can tell you how the end of my days used to look like before Thrive. The couch and I had a, had a really nice relationship (laughs) and, um, I did not have the energy to do anything with my children. So how does the end of your day look? And this will be for Facebook. If you can hook somebody in, in the beginning of your post by saying somebody else, something like, have you ever felt this way? Like who else has done this? Um, what do your Monday nights look like? Um, something that is going to catch their attention, because I can tell you people's attention spans are small. And if you're not catching your, their attention in that first line, they're not going to read the rest promise. They're not going to read the rest. So it doesn't matter what the rest of the stuff you said, you got to make sure you have some sort of tagline that's going to catch their attention. So have you, can you, who has 
something that brings them in like you're talking to them. Instagram is all about service related to a niche, 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 whatever you want to say. Um, so we're going to do a reel on Monday and the type of reel is a how to, however you want to spin that that's related to your niche. So if yours, is, yours is, um, homeschooling, how to put pr- plan for your day, how to find the right curriculum, how to whatever, if you're overcoming addiction, how to make sure your mindset is set right for the day. Um, if your thing is, I don't know, like mine's weight loss, like how to plan out your meals, how to make sure you have the right type of exercise set up, like whatever, any sort of how to, you can use a trending sound, you can talk, you can do something funny, like whatever. Stories, uh, I put capsule tag. So the reason I'm saying capsule tag is because you're going to post something about your capsules, why you love them in the morning, and then tag a couple people that you know. Make sure that when you tag the person, peoples, that you take the little comment or text box with their tags and you drag it down to like the bottom left corner until it disappears or the bottom right corner until it disappears. And then it doesn't show up on your story. And then um, share those that tag you as well. And this just shows that there's other people utilizing the product. It's kind of like the same concept as Flex Friday, but it's on your stories. So Tuesday, Facebook, it's payday, of course. So we're going to talk about the business. Um, Talking about the June bonuses that we have in some way, shape, or form. Again, if you can utilize a tagline, like who else is feeling stressed out about buying groceries lately? (laughs) Um, And then you could say like, what if I could show you a way to get X amount, you know, we want to put amounts, obviously. So we have to change that up. What if I could show you how to get a full cart of groceries by the end of the month? I don't know, (laughs) like something along those lines. Um, But talking about the June bonuses, because we do have for 4Ks, anybody that is a new 4K gets a thousand in credits and a thousand bonus. Like, yes. Yes, friend. What is your question? Um, With these bonuses, I mm-hmm. was wondering, are we allowed to, because I know there's a the whole thing about the dollar amounts and stuff like that. Can we put in there a thousand dollar cash bonuses, a thousand credits, or no. do we just put all kinds of bonuses we can't put the amount unfortunately okay i just wanted to verify never... that <laughs> thank so you stupid, but it is what it is we're about following the rules and i'm grateful that we actually have a company that's trying to protect us so because so many people will be shady. other businesses would be shady and just say like yeah shout it out but they care about us maintaining integrity which is important i think So, yeah, I think if you can translate that into like, what if I could help you, um, you could say, what if I could help you earn some extra cash by the end of the month or a significant or like make your car payment by the end of the month? Like you can use creative think of ways. Um, Instagram, I have Twitter style unpopular opinion. So do you know what I mean by Twitter style? It like looks like a tweet. So it's like a white background, or you can do another background with a white box on the inside. Your little, maybe I should just show. I think that would be the easiest way to do it. I'll show you what I mean. Look at Shannon's beautiful face. <laughs> E, 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 e. this is what I mean this is what it looks like so this is a what I would call a twitter style post um I don't know if there's anything else I want to show nope that's all I'm going to do for now stop broadcast here we go now I got to go back to the zoom and remake my other self <laughs> the host <laughs> okay <laughs> So that's what I mean by Twitter style post. Um, Unpopular opinion. So if you can think of some unpopular opinion that relates to your niche, um, like maybe that's 
homeschooling is hard. I just think of this because I know people that have that sort of niche. Um, homeschooling is hard or uh, carbs are the enemy or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I make it on Canva. Mm-hmm. They have templates for it. So that it's super easy. Like you can just drop your photo in the little circle and it puts it on there. Maybe I should do like a whole Canva training someday because it's like my bread and butter. I love Canva so much. But yes, <laughs> maybe I'll do that someday soon in the near future. Um, any sort of unpopular opinion. And if you can make it into a, a carousel, which is multiple slides, the better. Um, if it's just one, that's totally fine too. Or you could do like the short clip video thing where you screenshot the picture and then post that as a video so people like stay on it you could do it any sort of way but unpopular opinion and then um yeah like your take on it stories business unfold so what a business unfold is is it explains why you join the business what you're getting from the business or what you're looking to achieve from the business and then the, there's a call to action at the end of it and this is like basically where a story unfolds. That's why it's called unfold. So it starts with a caption, then you add another caption, then you add another caption, and then some sort of call to action at the end, whether that's a poll, whether that is showing like send me or saying, send me a DM, like whatever. So a business unfold for stories on Tuesday. Wednesday for Facebook, I have a live video. I have noticed a large uptick in the views on live videos on Facebook. They were down significantly for a long period of time. So take advantage of that if you can. And this can be on anything. This can be you being silly with your kids. This can be an unboxing. This can be you packing up samples and explaining what's in it. This can be you telling your thrive story. This can be you interviewing somebody else doing their thrive story. Um, anything you can think of. Do a live video for Facebook on Wednesday. Instagram reels. We're going to do common myths within your niche. And that can be any sort of like music, trending sound, whatever. Stories. We're going to do a poll series. So what, if you can make it related to your niche, that would be awesome. But you could also make it summer themed. You could make it um, asking people what more content they want to see. You could make it any sort of thing. So just a poll series. So like multiple slides with polls. Thursday um, for Facebook, I think it's always important for us to talk about community within our business because that is what carries people through when maybe their paychecks aren't what they want to be yet is the community of people that you meet. So if you can talk about that. We do have Lisa's Zoom on Thursday, so that would be a great way to talk about it. There's always a significant amount of people on there. Um, if you've met her in person, even better, you can discuss that too. Um, or you can show a trip that you've taken. You can show like, did you go to conference? You can show an event that you went to um, or people that your new friends that you've never met, that you met on the internet, like whatever. Talk about community and the impact that's had with you with the business. Instagram. I have why you should start doing X, Y, Z for carousel. So this can be anything niche related. Are you so funny? Yeah, they're not. It's kind of annoying because it, it was translating for a period of time. And then in, they decided to change the format for um, Instagram. And that kind of messed up the ability for it to transfer over into Facebook. So. Okay. What I've been doing, hate that too. What I've been doing, so like yesterday I did a poll for the samples that I was sending out. And then what I did is I took this, I took the same like picture that I had the poll on the in Instagram. And then I went into Facebook and I said, for my Facebook friends, and then did a poll there. <laughs> so you could do that. Um, I know it's like extra work for us and it kind of sucks, but you know, what can you do? Mm, stories for Thursday explain with your voice all three steps talk please talk on your story so people can get to know you um just to go go through why it is you take all three steps what they provide you um and why somebody else would need that so one way that I did this one time and I thought it was super impactful was that I said so these are four 
and I would pull up like the capsules and I would say, these are for when you hit the snooze about 8,000 times and you're really struggling to get up in the morning, these will wake you up within minutes. Then you pull like the next one, like the lifestyle mix. This is for <laughs> if you have a jacked up digestive system in however way that looks, this will save your life and you just mix it up and it actually tastes really good. And then the patch is like, this is for when it's summertime and your children have asked you 900 times for a snack already today. And it's like mood support or something like that. Like that's how I've explained it before. And that seemed to be really impactful. So I would suggest trying that. Something along those lines. Um, the reason that we explain on Thursday what all three steps are is because Friday on stories, we're gonna talk about samples. So yes. Um, Facebook for Friday, Flex Friday or your samples. So however you want to spin that, don't say DFT and make sure you're using the hashtags that Chas and Amber talked about the other day. So hashtag bloom in June and hashtag, oh, what was the other one? I've just been using bloom in June. Five out loud. Yeah. I, I was just about to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks friends. <laughs> Cause I'm a space cadet. <laughs> So hashtag bloom in June, hashtag thrive out loud um, so that you can take advantage of the promos that they're running, but, and to just build community around those hashtags. Flex, and then don't tag a ton of people, just share your, your Flex Friday link in like a uh, chat thread or something like that. And I know sometimes on the dream team page, they have like drop your Flex Friday and people go in and blah, blah, blah. So explain why a bunch of other people might be showing their pictures as well, because otherwise it's just like, what's going on here? <laughs> so I always say like, who else has a sticker that's helping them today? Or like, see, I'm not the only one that this is helping or something like that, that makes sense as to why there's a bunch of people that are commenting on your stuff. Um, Instagram, I'm doing a reel again. And I have original audio. If you can do original audio, this doesn't mean that your face has to be on there. You can do a voiceover. The way that I personally do voiceovers is through Splice. That's the um, app that I use to edit all my videos, whether it is I'm putting a bunch of videos together to create a story of me going on a walk or I'm doing my three steps. Splice is what I use. You do have to pay for it, unfortunately, but that's a write-off, you guys, so but it allows you to do voiceover. Um, Reels allows you to do voiceover too. So there's an option where you can click voiceover and talk into it, however you wanna do that. Original audio. And then stories, what's in a sample with a poll or a call to action at the end. Saturday, Facebook, I have small business, small business Saturday. So whether that is maybe you're highlighting a business in your community, maybe that's you're allowing other people to share their businesses with others on your, your post. Maybe it's you're talking about your own small business, like how you never thought that you would be somebody that would be a small business owner. And then um, just sharing the things that you love about owning your own business. Instagram, I have reintroduction. Please allow me to reintroduce myself. Um, so this can be, because your goal obviously is to gain new followers. If you're getting new followers, it's always a good idea to reintroduce yourself. So like, hey, this is me. This is my mission sort of a thing. And maybe it's a picture of you, you and your family, whatever that might be. Stories, I have testimonials. This doesn't necessarily have to be like written testimonials that you've gained or collected through various testimonials that people have <laughs> commented to you or sent to you in direct messages. Um, this, a testimonial can also be, oh, cool. That's a good idea, except the watermarks. There's something, another site that I know of for TikTok that will remove the watermarks, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> you can search for those things too in Google. Um, sorry, testimonials. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like word testimonials. It can be before and after testimonials. So you can just share like your own personal and then like say, take a look at 
thank you. Take a look at what, who else this is helping um, so that you're showing because sometimes there's people that are on the sales timeline. There's a sales timeline first. They're just searching around. Second, they might be interested, um, but they're just needing some additional, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Like justification, basically. And the last one is trusting you to be the person. So sometimes people are in that middle ground where they're just needing the burden of proof for you to show them that. And that's why it's important to do testimonials before and afters and things like that. So, or other people coming on live videos and sharing or other people you sh like, that's why flex right is important. That's why, um, the, uh, the tags on stories are important is so that they're getting that proof that it's not just you, there's other people too. So that is our week. And I came in a little late this time, but that's okay. a little later than I like to leave. I love, love, love and appreciate the dialogue back and forth. I love when other people contribute because it's not just me. I don't have all the answers. And yeah, so um, I will, maybe we'll do an extended Saturday where we will go for an hour and the first half will be strictly exclusively canva and other apps to use and just kind of like a tutorial on those apps and then the last half would be planning your week maybe that's what i'll do i think that's what i'm gonna do and if you can't come it'll always be on youtube so i will get this specific recording up within the next 10 minutes ish it just depends on how fast zoom likes to be sometimes <laughs> and how fast youtube likes to be but until then, thank you guys for coming and I will see you next Saturday, same time, same place. So the 4th, the 11th and the 18th will all be Saturday, uh, plan your weeks and then Sunday, the 26th as well. So love you guys. Have a great Saturday and I'll see you next week.